Got a question for you, Christian. What should be our first or primary or most prominent prayer request when we gather with other believers and petition the Lord? That is, when we ask the Lord to do something, what should that be? I think we find the answer in 1 Timothy chapter 2, where the Apostle Paul is writing to his young protege, Timothy, the young pastor, the seasoned evangelist slash missionary theologian, Paul, writing to his young friend who is following in his footsteps in ministry. And Paul writes these words, 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from the New King James. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, meaning mankind, men and women, boys and girls, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. When it comes to meeting with other Christians and offering up requests to God, we should be thanking God for his creation and for those who he has created. We need to have a grateful heart for other people. Now, what's fascinating is he shifts from grateful heart for all men and for kings and people in authority, praying for them, to an emphasis on the salvific work of Jesus Christ for all people. The emphasis becomes you're praying for them so that we might live a quiet and peaceful life, that people might live the type of lives they were created for, which requires that they are in proper relationship with the Creator, God. And that relationship only comes through Jesus Christ, the one mediator who connects us to God and reconciles us to God, the one who took care of our sin problem on the cross of Calvary, the only Savior, Jesus Christ. It doesn't take much reflection to realize Paul is talking here about evangelistic prayer. This is an expanded version of that request in the Lord's Prayer when Jesus said, Thy kingdom come. You may not have thought of that before, but thy kingdom come is an evangelistic prayer. God's kingdom comes by invading the hearts of men and women and boys and girls. God's kingdom comes through people who have surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and who are discovering how to walk in the Spirit and how to please the Lord with their words, thoughts, and their deeds. This is evangelistic prayer. So many times in church life, we focus our prayers on alleviating the suffering of the saints. And while there's certainly nothing wrong with praying those prayers, we have to remember that we, the saints of God, whatever manner of suffering we can have alleviated in our life, that's great, but we're headed for heaven. Those who are not yet saints, those who are not yet saved, they're not headed for heaven. They need Jesus. They need the Lord. That should capture our attention and our hearts as it does the heart of God. So pray for people. Pray for all peoples that the gospel would come to them and they would be saved.